Google's operating system for smart TVs hasn't seen any groundbreaking changes for a while now, but with the much-anticipated beta for Android 13 finally rolling out, has the company managed to inject a new life into our TV screens? Let's dive in and find out. First, no overhaul treatment for Android TV. Over the past few years, Android has expanded its branches from the palms of our hands to other smart devices like TVs and watches. One thing that has stayed consistent between all these different variants, though, is the design language that Google has adopted. Last year with Android 12, the tech giant brought a lot of visual changes to its mobile OS. We got all all sorts of new features, including that nifty little animated clock widget and the automatic wallpaper color palettes. It was easily the biggest change to the company's UX since maybe Android 5 Lollipop way back in the day. As great as it was, however, that visual overhaul never really translated to the smart TVs. All we got were some behind-the-scenes tweaks that targeted optimization and a smoother user experience. With that said, everyone was perfectly fine with those changes because the thing is, Android TV does not need to follow in the footsteps of Google's mobile OS. Next, smart TVs are not ready for a radical change in OS. You see, the smart TV market is still relatively immature right now. Yes, we've had these things in our houses for over a decade now, but to this day, these TVs continue to be streaming machines and nothing else. And to be fair, that's totally okay, because that's all we need right now. Our current internet infrastructure has just not been robust enough for more advanced features like game streaming via Xbox Cloud or Google Stadia. Plus, the processors on our TVs are also not the fastest in the world, as most budget options can barely run Netflix at 4K resolution. Besides, Google's own streaming device is just a more powerful Android TV. As long as the OS is good enough for us to scroll through our media and stream, it really shouldn't be a problem. With this in mind, let's take a look at what's coming next. So what's new in Android 13 for TV? So far, we've had two betas, with each bringing its own set of new features into the mix. However, if you're wagering on a massive UX overhaul, be ready for disappointment, because you won't find that here. This new version of Android looks almost exactly the same as the last, and we don't even have a reskin on top of it. But hey, it's not a big deal, because if it ain't broke, why fix it? What is different, though, is a lot of protocol and certification stuff under the hood. Now, people usually dismiss this stuff as a whole load of nothing. But hear us out, because these changes are important. For instance, one of the new quirks introduced in the latest beta is the way your TV handles playback via HDMI. If you've got multiple sources like an Xbox and a Chromecast with Google TV plugged in, you know how much of a pain it can be to manually stop playback each time you want to hop onto a quick match of Fortnite. Android 13, though, completely eliminates that problem by automatically pausing playback when you switch away from an HDMI source. Other than that, we've also finally got picture-in-picture -picture support, meaning that you can scroll through your media without having to stop watching what you're watching. Or, if you prefer, you could also talk to someone via Google Duo or keep an eye on the security feeds as you watch a TV show. Honestly, this was a much-needed change, as it opens up so many possibilities for multitasking right on your television screen. In some other not-so-needed changes, however, the company has introduced a power-saving feature that can disable internet connection or wake locks for idle apps. Now, TVs already don't use up much power, and they're plugged in all the time, so we're not sure about this one. Is Android 13 a disappointment? If you are hoping for a complete UI revamp from Google, then obviously you won't like this. With that said, hoping for change was always going to be wishful thinking because it's not like Android TV has much competition from other companies. Yes, we've got other options like Roke and Tizen, but they're nowhere near as good as Google's offering. So when there isn't any external push to be super innovative with your products, companies don't tend to invest much into these things. Of course, this doesn't mean that they haven't brought anything new to the table. In fact, the changes in Android 13's first two betas are pretty sweet, especially the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Besides, we've mentioned before this is really not the time to be chasing a visual overhaul. You see, given the fact that smart TVs are still catching up to other modern technologies in terms of their processing power. They're not equipped for big changes, so adding any extra animations or skins on top of the function's UI would probably lead to laggy experiences. Also, you're slowly inching towards the low latency era with Wi-Fi 6E and 5G, and we believe that when these two are fully adopted and normalized, then we'll get the actual big change for what we're hoping for. Why? Well, because low latency data transmission will open a new range of user cases for TVs, with smart device integration and video game streaming. In fact, Microsoft is already working on an Xbox cloud gaming application for smart TVs, so it's only a matter of time before we get better hardware in our TVs that can support those newer protocols. For now, though, it's good enough. In other news, Apple is testing foldable devices with e-link displays. With every major smartphone manufacturer cashing in on the hype for foldable devices, it was only a matter of time until Apple also barged its way in. The Cupertino company is apparently prototyping tablet-like devices that can fold, much like Samsung's Fold series. However, a fascinating little detail about Apple's test device is that it's using the e-link technology for one of its displays. Now, e-link isn't a groundbreaking technology. In fact, Amazon already uses it for its ebook reader, the Kindle Paperwhite. What is groundbreaking, though, is the fact that this is the first time anyone has ever tried to use the display on a foldable device. You see, until now, companies like Samsung and Oppo have been using OLED screens to power both displays on their foldables. Now, OLEDs are pretty cool because they're vibrant and save power. Apple, however, seems to be going down a completely different path. If they use an e-link display for the outer screen of their folding device, it would massively improve 
improve battery life. One big downside of using this tech though is the loss of responsiveness and colors, so this could probably just end up acting like an always-on display for reading notifications. Leaving WhatsApp groups is about to become a lot less dramatic. It's never a good sight when you try to sneak out of an unwanted family WhatsApp group, but then it's just straight up notifies everyone. No one wants the sort of attention, right? Well, if you're one of those people, then this is your lucky day, because WhatsApp is currently working on a feature that would allow you to leave groups discreetly. According to a screenshot shared by the WhatsApp beta tracker, the messaging platform will soon only inform the admins that you've left a group. This means that anyone else who's in the group spamming good morning messages won't have a clue about where you just vanished. Of course, this is part of the app's push for improving its community features, especially after people started to switch over to Telegram. So far, we've gotten bigger limits for groups and calls, and the ability to react to messages with emojis like Instagram. With that said, while this change is definitely exciting, we're not quite sure when it will actually make its way to our phones. Samsung is developing its own custom SoC for Galaxy devices. One of the biggest pitfalls of Android when compared to iOS is the fact that these things are just not as well optimized for these devices. And while the blame for that largely lies in the fact that Google's OS is spread across so many devices, it also comes down to the standardized ARM chips. However, it seems like Samsung is ready to act and solve this issue by creating its own custom processor for the Galaxy lineup. But wait, don't they already use their own processors? Well, yes, but this one's different. Exynos chips, despite being custom designed, are actually still based on ARM designed CPUs and GPUs. This new custom chip, on the other hand, will be completely built from the ground up by Samsung, much like what Apple does with its A series Bionic chips. So while these new SoCs will still use ARM's instruction set, they'll actually be tailored for speed and power efficiently according to the Korean manufacturer's requirements. In the long run, this could prove to be crucial for better performance and optimization on Samsung Galaxy devices. We'd have to wait a long time to see it in action though, as the new silicon is slated to launch in 2025. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think that Samsung could finally take on Apple with its new set of chips? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!